Virginia is a plantation town, uh, an also plantation town. Uh, Kirk, uh, 1610, I believe, when it was uh, first mooted, you know. It's called Virginia after the Virgin Queen Elizabeth, who was on the throne from 1558 to 1603. Therefore, 1610 is only seven years after her demise. That's reputedly where it's got its name. How they found out she was a virgin or not, I don't know. But uh, leave that to your own devices. <laughs> 45 years she was on the throne. <coughs> yeah, 45. Where do we go from there? Oh, I, yeah, so. yeah. Uh, for, where you've just left, where, that's where it was supposed to be. The town was supposed to be started there. On the lake shore. On the lake shore where you've just left having your breakfast. The lakeside manor. But the lake being kidney shaped, some bright spark then said, well, that's not the place to put the town because there are people over the far, there are a, a, a community, there is a community over the far side of the lake who want to come to this town. And they brought it and put it at the narrowest part of the lake. It's only a half a mile across the lake from, it's worth your while going down to see it just when you are here, just go straight down to the lake. And when you come to the chestnuts, turn left and you look across the lake, you can see Muncher Connet. Now that does not mean that the people of Connacht and that they came in Cromwell's time, but they didn't. There were two brothers and one of them was Connacht. I don't know how the other fellow, who the other fellow was. And there was tribalism at the time and they fought amongst themselves and these got the supremacy over them and were called Muncher Connacht. The people of Connacht. He was Connacht, whoever he was, O'Reilly or O'Farley or my own name, Doherty, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they, they brought the lake to this side so that it was only half a mile across and there was a ferry service established on it to bring the people over and back. Now, not immediately. I wouldn't say that happened just overnight. The whole, all this area, this area, the town, Muncher Connor that I'm just been talking about, and the town was owned by the Marquis of Headfoot. Houses the lot. And it's only recently, I think, that uh, the last one of them was bought out the rights of them. This, by the way, was was, was a freehold mine, because of an anti mine that worked in it and uh, that sort of thing, you know. With the plantation, that's where the Headford connection would have come in, they were granted and given large tracts of land. And the other hotel that's over here now belonged to him, the Park Hotel Virginia which he used only as a shooting lodge uh, and a summer residence, of course. And uh, down through the years, I can only go back as far as 1926 and I don't remember much before that, and certainly not a lot after it. But he sold out in 1939 to a local family, the McDonald family, whose shop was on the corner over there and uh, they made a hotel out of it in 1939. Uh, a well-known hotel, well, well known for... And uh, shortly after that, well, 19, six, six years afterwards, there was a golf uh, course built on the land in front of it, which made it most attractive to... Well, that to, gave to, you uh, shooting fish and it, 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 it did, it did. If, uh, if only a name, it was there anyway, you know, yeah. except to, to be revived at any given time. And yes. uh, it's only a nine-hole go um, uh, golf course, but very picturesque. It's right on the shores of the lake. Um, it's referred to in books and, 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 and tourism and, and uh, any other sort of advertising that's given it as the Killarney of the North, uh, Virginia. Now that brings us up to, well, nearly the present day. It was in '45 the golf course was put on. No, yeah, you, you would have been away then, like for. I was uh, away from '46, say. you may say, but I, I, I never lost contact with Virginia because I came home two, three times a year. I yes. came home to fish actually every year to the Mayfly. Right. Uh, it, it, it. Um, it's a good lake for the Mayfly. It's a great lake for coarse fish. There are trout in it. But 
uh, got a, a bit of a hammer in the last few years and uh, then it depends on weather, it depends on the play, it depends on yeah. all sorts of things if we're going to have a good season this year or not. Right. So, but the, we don't the name Raymore? That I am very doubtful about. Uh, uh, the loch is easy, that means lake. Yeah. Now, Rawa is fat in Irish. Now, what it means of a fat lake, I don't know. Unless there was another meaning for it, and I haven't got it. Mm. Mm. Because um, Bolla Loch Rawa, it has been called uh, in the Irish, uh, town of Loch Rama. Um, Virginia, uh, Acha Lur, Acha is a ford and Lur is a fork. The fork, that makes sense because there are two rivers. The, the, the lake is fed by three rivers and two of them are here and we're in between them. One outside the town there and this one here that runs at the back of my house here. Oh. And, um, Can that's I, yeah, to that. Well, okay, yeah. well, come to like. What, how do you think your love of fishing came about? What, what was it attracted to fishing? Oh, well, yes, well, that's, uh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that's innate in, in, in a person. You, you, you just, you just don't go waking up one morning and say, I'm going to be a fisherman. <laughs> and uh, it's, 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 it's inherent. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's a throwback to somebody who was, my uncle was a great fisherman. It seemed to leave Paddy Carl. I, I, I understand. I did never knew when you went to America. Yeah. Well, then, can you explain the, the attraction then of it? To oh, I can. Be oh, I can. Oh, oh I, can. Give it, I can. I can. I tell you the, tra the attraction it is that if you're doing something else and that comes into your mind, you'll drop it down and go to fish. That's the attraction. That's very important. And uh, a great friend of mine who's dead since, who used to fish the other lake, left the spade stuck in the ridge or, or, or drill of potatoes that he was that he was uh, setting and for no apparent reason he had to be there from the lake at that moment and went and caught fish and that's the attraction yeah. what well, it's inexplicable why but that's the attraction to 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 see a lad like that coming along on the top of the wave and 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 you your knees going like jelly in the bottom of the boat <laughs> I'm wondering whether you're going to get into them or lose them or stick them or whatever it may be. Yeah. And then, of course, when you're in, it's not like shooting, your fun starts. When you're in the fish, he'll go on a race from here to the corner and maybe pitch. So all those things have to be yeah. taken into consideration. It's like, I, I would say, it's like a bookworm. You, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're a bookworm and you, you, you have a book, you, you'd be reading it and you eating your breakfast. That's true. You know? That's true. But fishermen are notorious for gilding the lily a bit when it comes to the <coughs> that The best the men of all time for sitting on a high stool with a bunch of fibres and every single pint he adds another half pound to the fish that's caught. Now that is true. And you couldn't believe God save you in the middle of the Hail Mary from many of them. But now you wouldn't fall into that category. Oh, well I don't know but I'd be the best at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't know. No, uh, well, then, since we're on, you'll that, have to edit it off a lot of I that. Would, you know, well, uh, but when it comes to size, like of different species, what would be impressive now? Uh, well, it was an, impre an impressive fish up till a few years ago, an impressive fish in the Mayfly season. We'll just take it because you can't. Yeah. Uh, yes, you, you could go back to the. I, I come to that in a minute. An impressive fish would be a three pound fish. Uh, You'd settle for a two or a two and a half, but if uh, you know if you had a three pound fish coming into you at one time, you looked at it. It's, it's me that's here with a three pound fish, and it's, a lot of it is luck. But you have to know something about it, of course, as well. Now, a good fish on the river up here, this river that comes at the back here, and we get this right because they had quizzes here and they didn't know the name of it. That is known as the Upper Black Water. It goes into the it rises beyond Bailieborough flows round and it, it, it's known as a different name through every townland it comes. You know, it's known as the Killing Care River, it's known as the uh, Marmot River, it's uh, all these, as it comes to a land, a townland, yeah. 
It's known as the, the name of the yes. town. Unlike the River Shannon, that would keep its well, name. Well, keep its name. Its, it's keep its name from the Shannon yes. part of the sea. Yes. Yes. You know, it wouldn't. Yeah. One thing, it wouldn't be the Leitrim River, and it, it wouldn't be Stat Hall. It's it, that it, 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 it rises in Cavan actually. Yes. In the Kilkenny Mountains down there, but it wouldn't be Cavan River. It wouldn't be Leitrim River. It wouldn't be yes. Limerick River. It's the Shannon. Yes, it's it's it's, uh, yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah. it's quite distinct in that sense. That's yes, right. Whereas lots of rivers and areas, uh, the name changes. It changes when they, when they go the through the different town lands, or if there was a battle on it, it might get a name. It, 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 you know, you never know. But this river here goes through our lake is the river Blackwater right the way through to Navan but it joins Navan at the Boyne and it's the river Boyne yeah. uh, it, it flows into the Boyne at Navan now um, fish in that river was known down through the years as the best conditioned fish in Ireland yeah whether it was the feeding or not I don't know but they were, they were very wily fish, very hard to catch. Uh, that could be due to a lot of things. It could be due to a lot of fishermen and they were getting prodded here and there and they were getting very wise to tell you who tied the fly. Uh, or it could be due to feeding, which the, our, that river up there was well noted for good feeding, mollusks and, and crustaceans of all sorts on the bottom. And they were bottom feeders for so long and then they came to the top with good hatches of flies and well, there's no cod. Um, there were short, fat fish, uh, fish that length could be two and a half pound. You know, big, deep, like that fish over there on the wall, not the big one, the little one. Little yeah, one. there was a lot of bulk to them. Bulk they'd, for they'd, be deep, they'd be deep, yes, deep fish. Yes, yes. Bream looking fish, bre what we call bream. Yes, bream yes. Fish, you know, I, I know but, that shape. But, but, but very wide and heavy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Your favourite, what's your favourite fish yourself? What do you like? Uh, to eat? No, no, to, to fish. What's, oh, what's your trout, fight? trout only. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't bother with it, coarse fishing at all. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I tried salmon fishing. I wasn't very successful at it, and uh, you have to be in an area where you have to be there. The day we used to go over to the west. Fiddy, you weren't here yesterday. How long are you staying? Oh, we're going back tomorrow. Well, you should stay tomorrow. Mm. Tomorrow. It's always the day that you're not there that the big fish are caught. Of course. Or of you're course. told they're caught. Yeah. Yeah, well, you you came back here in seventy five, say roughly seventy five. Yeah, and, and did you come back and uh, you did you come back as a teacher to work in teaching? No, 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 no. I had finished teaching. Yeah, were you more or less retired? Then? I had. You see, I, I I took early retirement. I I retired when I was forty eight. I had an upper chalk and talk. Chalk and talk. <laughs> there you see. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> that, was very, that was very young to retire. It was, it was. too young to retire, but I, one day's retirement is better than 20 years working. Yeah. Well, I love the idea of that myself now. Uh, I, that, and that and that there are three fellas in different walks of life. One was a teacher, the other one was in the bank. I don't know if the other fellow ever worked at all or not, but the three of them are retired and think it's great stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. So good. But my friend is in Australia, standing on the top of Gales Rock in Australia this morning. You know, he went out of here Wednesday. And he had three days in Hong Kong, and he's gone on to Australia. And he'll be back the 3rd of March. Yes, yeah. Um, would, there, would there have anything that happened since you came back in 75 that, I suppose, is like, you know, I know we had a bank robbery here 20 odd years ago. Oh, I remember there, it all too well. I was standing looking at the window, looking out at it. Away. Yeah. Away. And I happened to say to the friend that was with me, I can't mention him because no, okay. um, I, I said it'd be a great morning for robbing a bank. I, out of the blue, uh, yeah. And the standing there were two mugs of tea, one there, one there, and we're. God, I said, look here, they're at it. And the ship fellow was coming, getting out of the car, pulling on a ballot lab and running it. It was in November, the month of November. I don't know what year now it was, it was a young gun who was, we had to go up and bring him home out of Castleknock, he was at college in Castleknock. And that was in November, whatever year, it was 20 years ago I suppose now anyway. Oh dear God. Yeah. Uh, was the town, you see you were right away from the town for a long time, but um, the town would have had a few characters and all the rest of it, were there um, people that you admired in the town looking at oh, back that maybe had passed on that? You know? Oh, very much so. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. There were, 
it wasn't a great industrial town ever. There's more uh, industry around it now than, than, than there was in the past. But it was a town of tradesmen, carpenters, shoemakers, blacksmiths, saddlers. And everywhere you went, you could go in and spend a keili, as, as we call it. It means a visit, talking to these people, bicycle shops. And you could always go in and have a chat with whoever owned it. And I always admire them for the lazy, like a daisy girl way, things were done and done to perfection. Yeah. And they had time to chat. They had time to chat and yeah. uh, tell lies about football or fishing or whatever the subject might be. Uh, I wrote a couple of articles in, 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 in all local books, not, nothing, nothing brilliant. But I always put this bit in that if he came if a farmer came in with a naked animal now a naked animal is he had no shoes on and no harness of any sort and he could turn at that corner and he could go home out of the town with the animal shod the animal harnessed and whatever particular type of vehicle behind him because there were three of them down there, the blacksmith, the carpenter, and the saddler, within 50 yards of one another, in that street going down to the lake. Yeah. And those people I did admire, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Were, there were craftsmen. Yeah, there were craftsmen. Mm. And the trap was built, and it was had to be the last ward, and yeah. all the different woods and the different places, and uh, yeah. sure, yeah. Uh, 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 we, we to talk about wheel rides, the wheel, with three different muds go into the wheel, it goes ash on the on the fellows, oak in the spokes, and the hub or or, 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 or centre of the wheel, the hub we called it, was elm. And that all had to be done by hand and precisely and dished and all the all the perfection that went into it. As they passed on they were never replaced. You see That's nobody right. would uh, see the I suppose that time they got a living, a meagre living out of it, but they were so proud of their work that they didn't pack it up and go elsewhere. They kept at it and, yeah. and perfected it. The ones that I remember were the last of them. Yeah. Uh, the old sailor who was on that ferry that I spoke about earlier said, always respect the southwest wind on Virginia Lake. It can come up and be very fierce can be very fierce and gusty and treacherous yeah. and to the to the to the uh, inexperienced well it's frightening and they don't know what to do and the more often it, and this happens they panic now it was young people that were drowned down there uh, a couple of swimming swimming fatalities but to be young people with no experience of what to do and uh, all you have to do in a boat is sit if you can do that and let, yes. let the wave drive you wherever it's going, it has to hit a shore somewhere. It's only if you do something uh, else. It's, it's only that if you stand yes. up and rock yes. the boat, yes. you know, yeah. Yeah. like everything else. Yeah. That's, yeah. What the, that's what the, what the saying came in, I should imagine, sit down and don't rock the boat. Yeah. And uh, I remember being one particular, I couldn't, can't give you the year, it could be in the 40s now, but early 40s, I think one or three or something like that. I was at school anyway. And um, we walked, the whole town of Virginia was down there skating on it, a, 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 a good crisp frosty night. On the lake? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And prior to that, prior to my time, now I don't ever remember seeing this, <coughs> and I'm 78, I'll be 79 shortly, that were able to tow timber from the far side with a horse buckled to the timber and drag it across on the lake. Whether it was foolish or not, I don't know, but they did it anyway, because there was mills here. There was a mill on this side, two mills here. There were two lovely mill wheels, which unfortunately are now no more. One at the bottom of my garden that scotched flax. The other one, the far side of the river, was a, it was a sawmill, worked by water, water yeah. yeah. And the, the same two wheels, not the same two wheels, but the one on this side, I think it was, 
was a gener- generated electricity and the Elliot family lit up this town before ESB was heard of. Really? Yeah. The, 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 there were faults in it because it was very new. There was faults in it, but uh, see, if the water was taken off the wheel, the light went out or down, dimmed. Yes. But if you had a good supply generated, you know, good supply to send it out, it was quite good.